Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nabo H. Barista, and today I'm gonna to be doing something a little bit different. Today I'm actually going to be roasting coffee and this is my coffee roaster right here. This is the Hot Top KN8828B 2K Plus. This is the 2K Plus model which is the highest model that they, uh, they have. With this model I'm able to use the Artisan software which is a roasting software and this is why my laptop is right here. Today I'm going to be roasting coffee from Honduras. This is Honduran coffee and it's called Copan Organic. It's actually an organic bean. It tastes very, 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 very good. For this coffee roaster, I really don't like roasting more than 225 grams of coffee. I, I like a nice even uh, roast. So the less coffee I put in, the more even the roast is. So I'm going to be roasting today um, 200 grams of coffee. Before I get started roasting, let me uh, go through some of the things that you would need to roast coffee. So, first things first, what you're going to need is a coffee roaster. Um, this is a hot top coffee roaster, a home coffee roaster. It pretty much mimics a commercial coffee roaster very, very well. I think besides the fact that you can't adjust the drum speed, and you don't have a trier, so you can't physically take out your beans and smell it and look at it. But you do have this window here and um, you can smell the different things happening, all the uh, chemical reactions happening within the coffee. You can smell it. So you'll be able to tell by smell when your turning point is, your browning, um, you can hear first crack. You can't try it physically, but other ways to tell. Um, but you have full control of the fan speed, full control of the heat, you can turn down the cooling tray, and everything is controllable from the laptop. And if you don't have a laptop, not to worry. You can also operate this coffee roaster in full automatic mode and manual mode right from the roaster. Um, another thing, you want good lighting because since you can't physically take the beans out, you're gonna wanna light this area a lot so that you can be able to see your coffee. Good coffee, I buy my coffee from Bahi Coffee Leaf and other sources as well. This is the cone that comes with the roaster. And basically put this cone here and then you, you feed the coffee to the roaster. I put it here on top of this Hario V60 pour over, right? And I have a Pyrex measuring cup and I put this right under and it all sits on top of a Hario V60 scale. So from here, I just turn on my scale, get my beans, pour them inside, and I'll be able to weigh in grams how much they weigh. And also, I can just measure how many milliliters or ounces are in there as well with the cup. So the more information you write down about the bean, the, the bean mass, the weight, the size, before you put it in and after roasting, all this stuff matters, okay? Especially if you're gonna revisit this coffee in the future. Um, so yes, that's the reason why we do all this. And I also have this guy. So once my coffee has cooled down, I put it here and I just swift it around. I get rid of shaft that may be here or silver skin that may be around the coffee. And then also this allows you to see the coffee. Maybe there's some imperfections and you can take those particular beans and toss them out. So without further ado, let's start roasting. Okay, let's turn on our scale. I'm gonna pour 200 grams of coffee right in here. Right there, perfect. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I have 200 grams of coffee and just a little over eight ounces. So on this side, I'm just under 250 milliliters. And this is all information that you take down and you put it away. Lucky for me, the Artisan Coffee allows you to store all that information onto your computer. As you can see, I have the software up and running. This is the environment temperature. It's labeled ET, 
that's the temperature inside of the drum right and this is the B temperature there's two temperature problems in there one is to measure the temperature of the drum and one is going to be closer to where the beans are and that's like a little lower into the bottom that's going to give you the temperature of the bean and you're going to see these two temperatures change when we start our roast um, you pretty much right click here and now it says that the super mode is on super control mode and then what I'm going to do is press control and now my machine is on and responding to the program now that I have control of my roaster I'm going to turn on the power which is the heat to a hundred okay now that I've turned on the heat to the roaster you're going to see the environment temperature slowly rise when this environment temperature reaches about 380 degrees, I'm going to charge my coffee. Inside the roaster to the left is the heating element. If you look up here to the right, you're going to see the environment temperature is up to 118 degrees. It was 118.2, now it's 121. So that means the temperature inside my drum is slowly increasing. We are at 367 degrees, um, pretty much 10 degrees away from our charge. And I'm going to just start setting up for that. Five degrees. I'm going to press start here. And down here, the charge button, 382. I charge my coffee, guys. And I'm going to take my heat and bring it all the way down, all the way down. Close this, get this out the way. See my bean temperature is coming down because my bean is not hot yet. My beans are still cold. So the temperature problem for the bean is reading that and now the temperature is dropping. And because the beans are absorbing the heat inside the drum, the environment temperature inside the drum is dropping as well. Okay, this is indicating my rate of run. When this becomes completely horizontal, that's called a turning point and that's when the, the temperature stops dropping and actually starts rising. At turning point, I turn my heat back on. Okay, it was horizontal, I turn my heat back on and now the roast process begins. Okay, so the reason why I turn down the heat is because coffee has moisture inside of it, inside the bean. And so you want to introduce heat to the bean slowly. Um, think about steak. When you put steak on a hot skillet, you cook the outside, but the inside takes a while to cook. So when you cook the outside of a bean, it kind of creates this layer of insulation, if you will. And um, in the inside, it doesn't cook. Right? You want to roast the bean evenly inside and outside. And so in slowly introducing the heat in within the first minute or so, or up until the turning point, is a way of doing that. This is stuff that I learned from Mill City Coffee Roasters. And you can check out millcitycoffeeroasters.com for more information. And you can also check out their YouTube channel. Yes, we have Joe Morocco and, and Dave Borton. Those two guys are very experienced and very well respected in the coffee roasting business. I am now going to turn on the fan to about 20%. Now my beans are absorbing heat via conduction. When you turn on the fan, you're allowing air to move inside of the drum and in between the, the beans as well. And that allows for convection heat to turn on as well. Um, you can use a fan to bring the temperature of the bean down, but you can also use it to allow you to roast these coffees more evenly. My coffee is still green. I'm at 4 minutes and 55 seconds. Sounds like first crack to me. First crack, 8 minutes, 33 seconds. Let me bring my heat down to 80%. I want to try to elongate this process of caramelization. You 
Beautiful, beautiful. Sounds like fireworks. Okay, 370 is here. Scroll down here and press drop. Okay guys, so the roast process is pretty much done. Um, now the coffee is cooling down. Uh, let me show you the graph really quick. I charge my coffee at about 380 degrees. My bean temperature came down to 201 degrees. At 201 degrees, one minute and 24 seconds into the roast, my turning point began and I started to rise, 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 rise. DE means the ending of the drying period. Dry end also means when your coffee is fully yellow and ready to start browning. And it gets browner and browner and then this is the first crack. It happened at 8 minutes and 33 seconds into the roast, 343 degrees. I dropped my coffee later on at 373.5 degrees, 10 minutes and 18 seconds into the roast. Okay guys, this is the last part of the roast process. I'm going to now take the beans from the cooling tray of the roaster and transfer it onto here and do my little dance. Okay. And, and, and. <laughs> like I'm looking for gold. And this is it. All right, so that's just the skin of the coffee. Guys, come on, coffee is fun. Coffee is a fun thing. Let's not be too serious. Okay, the next step is to store your coffee. Um, I use these mason jars to store my coffee. I take that handy dandy funnel again. Put my two hands here. Ah, easy as that. And I have the mason jar that has this seal for freshness that in first and I tighten it okay now my coffee is sealed and I put this in a place that's not under direct sunlight but for the first 12 hours I actually don't tighten it I just place it on top and then I just turn this once not that it's there you go so it's not tight at all and what this does, it allows the coffee to degas. And then after a few hours, maybe tomorrow morning, I come in and I'll tighten it all the way so that air doesn't go in and gases don't come out. And then periodically, I'll just degas it and then close it back. Okay guys, so that wraps up this video. Um, I started with no coffee and I ended with 200 grams of coffee. Yeah, yeah, freshly roasted, beautiful color. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's just a blessing to have this equipment at home and to be able to roast your own coffee. Um, I am still in the learning process. I've only been roasting coffee not even a year yet. So, um, but I'm still doing a lot of reading, still doing a lot of experimentation. Um, so like I said in the beginning, this is not a video on teaching how to roast. It's just me sharing my roast process of this Honduran Copan organic coffee, super delicious coffee. Um, if you have any comments, any questions, please write below. Oh, you can even send me a message if you like. Um, I love interacting with other roasters, other coffee lovers, other baristas. Just let me know if you have any questions, any tips. I'm always, always open for tips and critique. Um, I, I want to better myself and I also want to just teach what I've learned. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really mean that. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. God bless. Take care and subscribe if you like and want to see more of these videos.